G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. And as we know with SharePoint, there are so many different ways to get to an amazing end outcome for the solution that we're uh, creating or the problem that we're trying to solve. Now in today's video, what we're gonna take a look at is a way in which we can link a Microsoft list with a document library and also use a relatively new action inside of Power Automate to create a document set to store a group of documents that we're going to be referencing from the Microsoft list. It's a solution that I uh, developed for an internal communications team that handles uh, external social media posts um, in an organization. And we're gonna use the out of the box Microsoft list content scheduler template, and then also link that to a document library where we can store all of our assets that are associated to that particular uh, piece of content that we are creating and then publishing um, on the social network. So let's just dive in and have a look at what we're talking about here. So we can see I'm in a uh, simple SharePoint team site. I've got two uh, lists, uh, well, one list and one library. So I've got the content scheduler out of the box template created from Microsoft Lists. And I've also got a document library that has got uh, the document set content type already added to the, the, the library. So you can see here, I've got new documents document set. Now the idea here is that we want to manage all of our um, content uh, in this schedule in the Microsoft list. So the Microsoft list is really good at managing and tracking uh, items of work, in our case, our content publishing. But we want to have a place where we can store all of our assets that are associated to that piece of content. Yes, we could use the attachments on list items, but I like to use a document library and an associated document library in this case, because we we might have videos and images and documents and things like that. So on uh, item creation of this list, what's going to happen is a Power Automate workflow is going to be uh, run in the background. It is then going to create a document set with the name of or the title as the name of the, the item, uh, the content from the list. And it's gonna create a document uh, set inside here. Then what's going to happen is we're going to push back and update this list uh, with a link back to that document set so that they are kind of linked together. So let's have a look at the Power Automate flow that we have built, and then we'll step through and build it out. So we can see here that um, I've got, a, I've got a, a Power Automate, a completed Power Automate flow here um, that does just that for us. So when an item is created, we create a new document set because that's now an action inside of Power Automate. We then grab that that metadata uh, of the item and then we do um, our update item as our last step here where we're pushing back the asset link here. So let's go ahead and create a new Power Automate flow and we'll step through this process. So we're gonna start this from scratch. So we're gonna click on cl uh, Automated Cloud Flow. Let's go create uh, document set asset, okay? And we're going to choose when an item is created and let's create this flow. We then need to select our site and our, li and our list that we're going to monitor. So we'll jump up to site, we'll jump into sales and marketing, and it's the content scheduler list that we're going to do. The next step after an item is created is we're going to jump into SharePoint, the connector. We're going to then create a document set. So we'll search for, uh, let's actually select the connector. <clears throat> we'll go create new document set. Now remembering the document set needs to be enabled on this library first. So if we go to sales and marketing, we then choose the library called assets because that's our document library. We then need to uh, have a couple of more mandatory fields here. So we need to select our content type. We could have multiple different con document set content types on this uh, library. And then we want to set the path. Now the path here, I'm just gonna pass in the title of the item. That's gonna be the, 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 the name of the document set here. The title, again, I'm just going to pop in the title description. I'm gonna pass in the description of the list item and the content type ID here. Um, we can just pass in document like so. So that is now going to then uh, create our new document set. 
We might just blank this one out for now. Now, next step is actually getting the metadata. So what I want to do is I want to actually, we don't need, what I want to do, if we needed to use that metadata, we could um, get the folder metadata here and then pass in uh, the items here. But what we're going to do here now is we are going to update our list item. So let's click on new step and then we'll go update item. Simple step here. Again, we need to pass in our site and our list and the ID of the item that we're going to create. So we'll go sales and marketing, list name is content scheduler and the ID we can get from the uh, this the trigger up the top here. So when a new item is created, we're not updating the document set, we're updating the item. So when the item is created, we wanna pass in and that's the, um, that's the ID of the item that we are going to update. Now we're going to pass back through here, we're going to pass back the uh, the title of the uh, the the item that was created. We'll pass that back in. We'll pass back in the description, uh, not the document set. We want the item. Now the asset link here is we want to craft out our URL. All right. So the status value here is our drop down. So we could set something if we wanted to here dynamically. But what we're going to do is just enter the same value and pass back in the same um, value as what was created. So when an item is created, we will go status value like so. Draft view again, let's just pass back in the date and we are now good to go. We'll leave it as that. Now, what we're gonna to need to do here is we need to pass in and create and craft the URL and the link to our document set. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to jump up to assets. I'm going to grab the URL of our document library and I'm going to use that as the base of the link. And then what I'm gonna do here, because we're naming our document set uh, using the title. So what we're gonna do is let's just select title and I am going to use the document set title like so, all right? And that will then give us the path. So let's now save this and give this a test, all right? So let's save it. Now, the first thing we need to do is I need to just disable that existing flow that was already created. So I'm just gonna disable that flow, which is this one here. So let's select and we will turn this one off and we'll wait for that to turn off. And now let's jump into our content scheduler list and let's add a new con uh, let's add a new item. So let's call this one uh, document sets. Document sets uh, linking link uh, to list. All right. So there's our description, all about linking a list item to a document set. Let's just give it a status. Uh, we'll plan this one, draft due by, uh, let's give this a draft due by end of the week and that will do us, all right? So we're gonna leave this one blank because we're gonna pass that back in. Let's hit save. And you can see that I've got a little button here as well, all right? So what I've done is a little bit of column formatting on this particular column here. So let's open up our assets library and let's have a look and see what we've got. So if we refresh this, um, it looks like actually what we might do is just let's edit this. We'll pop this into test mode. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll manually trigger this. So let's go manual. Let's just jump back into here and see if it's been, if it's picked that up yet. So just refresh and it's already done it. All right, so there's our new document set. We open up our set of documents and now we can upload all of our assets that relate to that particular piece of content. Now, what we'd probably do in production is also add and pass through some metadata and potentially then link back to that list item as well and pass in the list item uh, URL. So if I jump back to the content scheduler here, you can see that we've got all of our metadata. Now, when I click this button, I'm actually taken to that document set. So we've linked each one. We've got our uh, Microsoft list to manage all of our content and track all of our content and the statuses and the stages. And then also now we've got a document library to house all of the assets that are associated to that particular item in question. So I hope that brings you some value today. SharePoint does allow us to, to create lots of different types of, of scenarios, lots of different ways to bring value and create end-to-end -end solutions like this one here. Um, 
so have a look, take this back. You could potentially implement this, if not in this scenario, in a different scenario in your organization. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.